Welcome to part four of the DC Cache project. I ended up shooting this video over the course of a couple of weeks. This one is really a lot of work to uh, put together. So I hope you guys find this interesting. I know I sure learned a lot. We found some good stuff, we found some bad stuff. In the last video, we removed the head and uh, just did a general inspection of the top of the block and the uh, bottom of the head. Everything looks pretty good. There's no visible cracks. I also checked the bottom surface of the head and the top of the block for, you know, straightness to the best of my ability. And they appear to be perfectly straight. These are just huge chunks of iron. Even the head is just massive. So I don't think there's any warpage going on whatsoever. It's just dirty and has been contaminated with coolant and a little bit of water, which has caused some uh, surface rust on the valve train. I haven't cleaned anything up yet. That's kind of where I am now is trying to decide what to do next. So I had planned to remove the oil pan next. So before I started uh, that process, I figured I might as well remove a couple of the inspection covers and look inside. So that's what I did. Let me show you what's in here. And yes, I already cleaned out the bottom there. There was quite a bit of sludge down there. I even removed the oil pump um, pickup and uh, took that out and cleaned it. Let's go around to the other side. Okay, here we are on the starboard side. This is the front inspection plate. And that's just some residual solvent that I used to clean. But there's number two. Number one is up there, up in the bore. I don't know if I can get a shot of that or not. Let's try it. Well, there's the camshaft. And then the bottom of number one. Here's the rear inspection hole on the uh, starboard side. You can see I've still got some junk i got to clean out in the corner over there. If you see that flange right there, that is where the uh, oil from the crankcase splashes over into the clutch side. That's why you also have to remove that plug there when you change the oil in the crankcase because it's a wet clutch and it gets oil from the crankcase over there. That's the number four rod cap right there. And look at the size of that crankshaft. It's just, everything in here is just big. Here's number three again. Well, I've not been looking forward to this, but it's time to remove the oil pan. This thing is big and heavy and sort of awkward, but we have to do that if we want to get the pistons out. So I'll quit whining about it and we'll just get it done. Uh, this bracket up here doesn't seem to serve any function on this tractor at the moment. So I'm going to get it removed and get it out of the way. That'll allow me to get to these front bolts for the oil pan a little bit easier. All right, now I need to get the toolbox out of the way. All right, now we got a better look at uh, what we need to do here. So we've got uh, two larger bolts here. I think there's two more underneath in the center and then two more on the other side. And then we've got these 9 16 bolts here and then one two three more big ones there maybe another one on that side but again i think this is going to be heavy so i actually might get the jack underneath this to uh catch it when it drops because all right with the magic of editing all the pan bolts are removed with the exception of
And yes, this thing is as heavy as I thought it was going to be. Well, besides the bits of gasket and pieces of dirt and grime in here, the, uh, the oil pan does look pretty good. All right, let's get a good look at this bottom end here. Yeah, yeah see, I did see that before. I see all that sludge on the outside of the uh, cylinder sleeve right there. The bottom of the pistons look good so far. Bottom of the sleeves look good. From what little I can see of the camshaft, it looks good as well. Yeah, there's some more sludge up in there. It's actually cleaner than I thought it was going to be. But it's going to be really interesting to get one of those sleeves out. Let's see what we can see behind there. Looks like there's some more green stuff right there on the end of that uh, sleeve. That's the same one we saw before, I think. Yeah, so that's number three. That's the same one we saw before. I don't see any green stuff on any of the other cylinders. Just All right, I've got the rod cap removed from number three. Now we're going to push the piston out from down below. And we'll get a better look at it and the rings. Here's number three. You know, the top looks just fine. The rings actually look pretty good. However, we've got some evidence of what I think is overheating and scoring right here. And this side was the same color as the other side, but I wanted to clean it up just to see if that crud would come off of there. And this is what we got. So I was able to scrub all the crud off of it, but obviously you can see we've got some serious um, scoring going on. So that's not the best of news. I guess the next thing to do is uh, remove the sleeve on number three and also remove the pistons from one, two, and four and take a look at them. It, it could very well be that this is the only one that got scored up and overheated. So let's do that. We'll go ahead and get a look at the other three. And then we'll see about removing the sleeves. And at that point, we'll be able to come up with the uh, game plan and figure out what parts we need. All right, we're gonna try to remove the sleeve on the number three cylinder at this point. So here's my homemade uh, sleeve puller. The only pieces I had to buy were the threaded rod and nut and washer on top and the nut and washer on the bottom. The rest was all made out of uh, scrap material I had around the shop cut it up and welded it together. I've not tried this yet. We're gonna see if it works. I've got it double nutted on top so I can hold this with a wrench, which will prevent the bar from spinning. And then I turn this nut with a wrench and uh, it will hopefully pull the sleeve up. I see movement already. Let me show you. You can see how it's already starting to come up. So let's keep going.
It's getting easier now. It's real easy. I think it might be loose now. Let's give it a couple more turns. All right, let me remove the puller. I should be able to just grab the sleeve and pull it up with my hands at this point. All right, let's take a look up under here for a minute. You can see the bottom of the puller, of course, on the threaded rod. You can see how high the skirt is up in the bore versus number four there. The sleeves stick down below the uh, bore in the block by about an inch and the or maybe an inch and a sixteenth, give or take. And that's all it took for us to get this one loose was just to move it about an inch, actually a little bit less than that. Okay, here's our first look down inside. Let me dig around in there a little bit. Oh, there's all the nastiness right there. See that? I didn't see all this crud at first. It was kind of disguised in the darkness. Yeah, oh boy. Just to reiterate, this is part of the water jacket area down in here. That's why there are O-rings here in the first place. I still don't see the O-ring. I've got some of the sludge cleaned out uh, down there so we can get a little bit better look. So except for being dirty, I mean, everything looks okay down there. Wait a second here. Is that the O-ring right there? Let me clean that up and I'll see if I can get the camera down there and show you. All right, see if we can make this work here with this mirror. Uh, see that right there? That is where the O-ring is. And look at what I found over on this side. Can you see that right there? There's a whole chunk of that O-ring missing. Right, right there. And as long as we're in here, I'll show you what the groove looks like with the O-ring removed. Those grooves would need to be thoroughly cleaned out before installing new O-rings. Okay, let's see if we can remove the sleeve from number two. All right, here's the first look down into uh, number two. This one looks much better, but right where I'm looking at right there, looks like there's a little damage to the O-ring on this one as well. The rest of it 
I'll try to spin it around here. See, the rest of it looks pretty good. All right, I've got the piston rod out of number one. Let's get the sleeve out. All right, let's take a look down inside. I don't see any obvious damage to number one here. That one looks pretty good. What do you guys bet these are probably the original sleeves? Who knows? Take a look at all that mud. All right, here's the number four O-ring. There's some damage right there, see that? And it continues around a little bit. Yeah, there's some pretty significant damage right there. So based on what I saw there for number four and number three, I think both of those O-rings were probably leaking and it seems to correlate because uh, both of those uh, cavities on three and four had the most amount of uh, mud in there. All right, so let's give these a full evaluation. Uh, there's actually a lot going on here. We got some more bad news, but we'll start with the tops. This is number four. Nothing terribly remarkable about number four. Just got some carbon buildup. And I'm not an expert on piston rings, but they look okay. There's no cracks, there's nothing broken. The edges even still feel sharp. Uh, the rod itself looks to be just fine. And it looks like the rods have some type of an insert bearing going on. At first glance, this bearing looks pretty good, but when you look a little closer, you can see right there. The rest of the bearing is not terrible, but obviously that is a problem. So those are gonna have to be replaced. So here's number three. This is the one that we think was leaking the most. Again, the rings on this one look uh, just fine. They still feel sharp. There's no cracks or breaks but it doesn't take too much looking around to see that we have a problem you can see right in there that discoloration should not be there see how number four is that's all that silver steel color but number three is a burnt color right here so to me this means that this piston 
uh, was getting a lack of proper lubrication, probably from the coolant leak, right? And overheated. And unfortunately, this discoloration, this blackness, isn't just superficial. We don't have discoloration going on on the whole piston. It's just here and then 180 degrees on the opposite side. So on the other side, I've already taken a scotch bright to it and removed the, uh, the coloration from it. I just want to see if that was superficial or if it was in fact scored. And here's what I found. Unfortunately, that is real scoring. I think it's pretty evident on the camera, but I can get my thumbnail on it. It's just, it's not good. On one hand, you can say, oh, it's just an old tractor. Maybe I could polish that down and reuse this. Well, that might actually be a plausible argument, but it's happening on both sides. Um, pretty deep scoring. So I don't think we're gonna run this piston again. Just like number four, the rod is just fine. There's no issues with the rod. The rod bearing is probably the best out of all four. Number two looks a lot like number three, less carbon than the number four piston had. The number two piston uh, looks pretty good. No evidence of overheating or any kind of uh, scoring. It's just, you know, it's just got some age and wear to it. Uh, again, the piston rings are all good, or at least they seem good. The rod is good. However, we do have a big issue with the rod bearing. And what you guys see on the camera is exactly what it looks like. It is that deep. That entire chunk is missing from that bearing. Here's the number one piston. It was probably the cleanest of them all. Um, again, the piston itself looks fine. The rings look fine. The rod is good. But we have a similar thing going on here with this bearing. Look at that right there. What in the world caused that? At this point, I'm sure some of you are wondering how the crankshaft looks. Long story short, the crank journals are okay. Uh, don't ask me how that's possible. With that little chunk out of the number four and these huge chunks out of uh, one and two, how did that not damage the journal on the crankshaft? That is a mystery to me. So in that sense, I think we got really lucky. I think the crankshaft is ready to run just as it is. I don't think I mentioned this before, but every rod and rod cap is numbered. And when you install these in the engine, the number should face to the right side of the engine. Now I wanna see if I can pop both of these bearing halves out and see if maybe there's a model number underneath. All right, let me go grab all four sleeves and we'll evaluate them as well. So here's number four. And I cleaned it off just a little bit right in here so we can see it better. You can see that little clean spot right there. That is where the O-ring meets the sleeve. So going by the exterior of this, you know, getting this all cleaned up again, to me, this looks like it could be reused. Yes, it's obviously got some age to it and it looks terrible because it's all dirty. But this surface in here is pretty good. It's still flat and I think it would seal up again. But let's look in the inside. It's hard to get a good shot with the camera because the inside is a little bit reflective but it's actually in pretty good condition. It's just a little shiny, it's a little bit glazed. So uh, in my opinion, number four would be a reusable sleeve. Now let's look at the problem child number three. This is where the O-ring sat on the sleeve, but you can tell it's a much thinner um, band of contact than number four was. So not only is the O-ring contact narrower, but watch this, you spin it around 
and then right in there it becomes non-existent and I bet you a dollar that's where this damaged part of the o-ring was sitting we've got at least an inch if not two inches of a gap there that you can see there's no way that was sealing And remember the number three piston, we had the evidence of overheating and scoring. And you can see right there that discoloration uh, correlates to the discoloration on the piston. Then if we rotate this 180 degrees, yep, there's the other one. Yeah, I can feel scoring in there. For whatever reason, that's not as bad as the scoring on the piston, but it still exists, it's still there. It looks to me like the sleeve might even be slightly damaged on the outside, kind of where the O-ring is supposed to ride. All of these sleeves have a little bit of a ring ridge on top. They're all just a little bit glossy on the inside. They could use a good honing and uh, get rid of that ring ridge. But there's no damage to the inside of any of them except for number three towards the bottom there. The other issue with all four of these sleeves is that on the outside here where that ridge is, they're all very worn right there. In some areas that ridge is even sort of non-existent. So I wonder if these are actually the original cylinder sleeves from the factory. I mean there's no way to know that. That's where the ridge is supposed to be and you can see how uh, deformed it is. And they're all pretty much the same like that. So we have a decision to make here. Do we want to try to reuse these sleeves? Uh, again, I think the interiors of them, even number three, would probably be okay to run again if we gave them a good hone job. But the lower skirts of the sleeves are just not in very good condition. They're, um, they're worn and deformed. I don't know if they will seal correctly with the O-rings again. And I also don't know if they will seat themselves correctly down inside the block without a lack of a more defined ridge. And for inquiring minds, there's a part number on these sleeves, 4572A. And then below that's a letter B, I think it is. All right, so let's regroup here. In the last video, we learned that the head gasket had two small cracks and very well may have been contributing to the coolant leak but it is now evident that the uh, number three o-ring was definitely leaking probably number four as well maybe even number two and that ended up being the root cause of the coolant contamination in the crankcase so the mystery is solved but now what i mean yeah we might be able to use these sleeves again with a little bit of work and a little bit of luck we might even be able to use these pistons again with a little bit of work and a little bit of luck I would really like to get some new sleeves and pistons if I can find them, but uh, we also have the Babbitt problem to consider now. And is this stuff even available? I don't yet know. At this point, I only have 500 bucks and one oil change invested in the tractor. So I do have some room in the budget to order parts. I still think this tractor is worth the effort. Uh, what do you guys think? What would you do? I think the best course of action for now is to simply be patient I'll try to source the parts. I'll see what's available, see how much everything is going to cost, and uh, just think about this for a while. Of course, I still have to refresh the head and the valve train. I want to rebuild the carburetor as well, and I still have to get the block all cleaned out, which that's going to be a pretty big job in itself. So that'll keep me busy while I'm trying to uh, source the parts and figure out what to do. So thanks for watching, everybody. We'll definitely keep you updated on this project and hope to see you on the next video, whenever that will be. Take care, everybody. All right, I'm just gonna give you the dimensions real quick of the puller, just in case anybody's interested. The top plate is about seven and five sixteenths long by roughly three and three eighths wide. This is quarter inch plate. And then the height of the legs, uh, if we measure from the bottom of the plate to the bottom of the uh, leg, it's uh, 10 and three quarters. That's one inch square tubing. It could have been three inches shorter, but it was just fine the way it was. Then I welded a piece of square stock onto the bottom of the tubing to act as feet. 
and then uh, I filed them down, got them really nice and smooth. I didn't want any burrs on the bottom of the feet because you don't want to mar the top of the block when you're using the puller. And then on top of that, I used a double layer of thick duct tape just to protect the top of the block even more. This is three quarter inch threaded rod. It came in a three foot section. And uh, my plan the entire time was to cut it down a little bit, but, but I got everything mocked up over the cylinder and uh, it worked the way it was. So, so you could probably take about six inches off the length of the threaded rod. But like I said, it worked the way it was and uh, no reason to cut it really. I double nutted the end like you saw me do. I just had to hold on to the rod to prevent it from spinning when I started using the wrench on the nut to pull it up. I found that after everything got really nice and tight, I didn't really need the wrench on top anymore. And the last part of the uh, puller is this piece right here. Let me take it off. This plate happens to be 5 16 thick. It's roughly four and three eighths long. The width doesn't matter, but it's two inches. When I was making this part, I was really overly concerned about the the width. I was trying to get the uh, you know the inner diameter of the sleeve and then the outer diameter of the sleeve. And then I got underneath the tractor to uh, put the plate on the bottom of the threaded rod, and remembered that you know the the sleeve sticks down below the block by a little bit over an inch, so the edges could have actually been square. Um, because it didn't need to fit up inside the bore at all. Um, the only reason that may have been necessary is if for some reason the sleeve was ultra stuck and I had to like keep, you know, pulling it, pulling it, pulling it up through the bore and it wouldn't come out, then yes, it would have had to have been the proper uh, diameter to fit up inside the, the block. But in this case, the sleeve broke loose somewhere, you know, around three quarters of an inch or seven eighths of an inch travel. And then by the time I had it lifted up to an inch, I was able to remove the puller and just use my hands and pull the sleeve up the rest of the way. So for better or worse, there's my rig. Again, I could have easily taken six inches out of the length of the rod. I could have taken probably three inches out of the length of the, uh, the puller itself. But it was actually kind of nice to have it tall because it was uh, way up above the top of the block and it was easy to get a wrench on the nut and it was not in the way of anything. 